Hi, you beautiful entrepreneurs. Welcome to this week's episode of Your Business Unleashed. I want to chat about the Canada Emergency Business Account and the recent changes that were announced to it. Um, the, there's been some, I don't want to say misleading uh, stuff out there about about the changes, but I do think that it has been a little bit gray or maybe communicated improperly. And a lot of people I've talked to are getting the wrong idea of what this means for their business. So let's talk about it a little bit. So the first thing is these SIBA loans, uh, 40 or $60,000, depending on which uh, tranches you entered into, in order to get the 33% loan forgiveness, uh, they were due to be repaid a year ago, almost a year ago, by December 31st, 2022. But then the government came out and said, listen, we're going to extend this by one year because we understand that that might be a little tricky for people. The forgiveness portion of it's huge, right? So if you borrow $40,000, you're going to get $10,000 forgiven. That's that's a big win. And, and remember that these loans were designed to supplement businesses who were basically asked to close their doors and stop earning revenue. So it's only fair that if the government is making those asks that they're chipping in in some way. So this is one of the ways that they chipped in. So the new and the, so the, the deadline was extended to this December 31st, 2023. The government uh, a little while back just announced that they are going to extend it by another Wah, 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 two and a half weeks, yay, by January 18th, 2024. I don't think that that's going to make a whole bunch of difference in many people's lives. Maybe you're waiting for your December AR to come in, or maybe you're on Christmas vacations with the family. But I think in order to get at my 10000 or $20,000, I, I would maybe pop into the bank and make a payment during the end of December, even if I was on holidays. So the first thing that they've done is said, we're going to give you till January 18th. The reasoning behind that, Maybe doesn't make total sense to me, but I, I, I think that's uh, neither here nor there. You can go and refinance. So you can actually apply for a loan to pay off the SIBA loan. And so that would be going to your bank and saying, listen, I need a loan for $30,000 because I borrowed forty. The government's going to forgive ten. I need to extend this loan out on, a, uh, I need to extend the loan out because I don't have the thirty, but I do want the ten forgiveness. That's a refinancing. If you make arrangements and have an application in process with the bank that you originally received the SIBA loan from, they're going to extend your repayment deadline to March 28th. So you need to make sure that the wheels are in motion, the application is in at the institution that you originally borrowed your SIBA money from. If that is in place by January 18th, you actually get till March 28th to repay the SIBA loan. They're assuming that you're going to need a couple of months to get that uh, payment or that financing approved. If you go to a different bank, and what I've heard in the market is that people who are need this money, this $30,000, those SIBA refinancing loans can be at pretty high interest rates that are maybe even above market rate for what they're asking for. Um, and so what people are doing is going to other lenders and seeing if they can get um, refinanced for the $30,000 to pay off their SIBA loan at the different institution where they originally borrowed their SIBA loan. That does not qualify you for the extension to March 28th. So to be clear, the refinancing needs to happen at the bank that you originally borrowed your SIBA loan from in order to get pushed out to March 28th. By the way, I'm looking at my blog here on akenhenderson.ca forward slash blogs. You can go in and read all about this. So if you're not able to pay off your SIBA loan, um, the original uh, wording of the SIBA had it as a two-year term loan at 5%. That's been extended out to be a three-year term loan at 5%. So that's an interesting piece. Um, and just as a quick reminder for those on the tax treatment of the SIBA loan, the forgiven amount, so if you borrowed $40,000, the $10,000 forgiven amount was supposed to be included in your corporate income or your in your business income at the moment that you received the loan, not when you get the forgiveness. So that $10,000 had to be included way back in the day in your income uh, when you got the loan a couple of years ago. If you are not taking advantage of the $10,000 forgiveness because you can't swing it, you can't make that $30,000 payment, uh, you'll be able to deduct out that $10,000 when you actually repay the, the SIBA loan over time. You'll be able to go into your tax return and make adjustments to reduce the amount that you previously included in your income on those tax returns. There's some examples on the CRA's website, and I encourage you to go and look into them, but those are the main changes to the SIBA loan just to take any confusion out of it feel free to hit up our website, www.akenhenderson.ca 
forward slash podcasts. Or if you have questions about how these new SIBA loan rules might impact your business, feel free to uh, pick up the phone or fill out our contact form and we will be happy to discuss that with you. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Thank you.